The title of this episode is Mike Bondi. I'm Jack Lynch. This is being recorded June 17th, 2022. Date of occurrence was August 2001. I started work at Metro around August 20th, 2001. That was my first week at Metro. And I met Mike Bondi. Mike was one of these guys that had a very good sense of humor. When I cracked a joke, Mike had a follow-on. Something that I could reuse. Mike would also check back a little later to see if there was more to that joke or the development of the original joke. He kept track of these things. <laughs> I think that's what made him so funny and so good at what he did. Second day there, I was at Metro Central. Mike Bondi and a couple other guys, I think it might have been Gary and Craig, had been receiving household hazardous waste. They separated out the hazardous part. The waste part would just go over to the dump. It would just get disposed of that way. So Mike and those guys saw some stuff and they saw an opportunity for some fun. On this locker, they'd set a set of old knee pads that had come in that was going to go in the garbage. There was also a bunch of female stuff. Lipstick, eyelash lengthener pads and some of the other medical things that women use from time to time. They would put that inside of this guy's locker and they got caught. When I saw them they were in the middle of a disciplinary talk by a specialist. They were told that putting those things in and on a locker is demeaning and blah 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 and it went like that. Mike and the two other guys listened, had the doleful look on their face, said they'd never do it again and they were told to clean it up and get that out of here. When that little talk was done, I approached Mike and said, Mike, I'd like to have that stuff. I can dispose of it permanently. He looked at me and he realized that I had a use for it like he did. They gathered it up, put it all in a paper bag and gave it to me. I stuck it out in my truck. At the end of the day, I took that material and went on over to Time Oil where I'd worked before. Bunch of really good guys there, but they'd all gone home. So, all the female stuff I left out there on the roadway in front of the gate. And on the gate, I hung the knee pad with a little note that said, Guys, I know this plant's closing. I know you'll be looking for work. These things here I got for you are to help you out in finding a new job. <laughs> it did the job. I got a call from those guys the next day, and they're laughing and enjoying it. I also told Mike Bondi and the boys what I'd done with it too, and they got enjoyment out of it. Mike Bondi also was one of these guys that had connections. He knew people, he knew things, he knew where to get stuff, or how to get stuff to come to us. You want it, Mike was the guy that could do it. And the first incident of that was when I was talking to Mike and mentioned that I had a bunch of these old Super 8 movies from when I was a kid and older. I'd really like to own a projector rather than just borrow one. Mike says, I can get one for you. I couldn't believe it. What's it going to cost me? He says, I think it's about 15 bucks. I jumped at it. It's great. Where is it? He says it's over at Goodwill. Found out that Mike is an aficionado of everything Goodwill. There's several stores that he went to on a regular basis, and he knew what was for sale, what was a good price, what was where. He got the projector for me, and it was 15 bucks, and it worked really great. A few months later, I was talking to him. I'd mentioned to him that I wanted to get a food processor, but I didn't want to pay full price or really get a brand new one. It just had limited use anyway but he said I can get you one I said what do you think it'll cost he says well, I don't know five or ten bucks maybe he said the plastic will be old and it'll be brittle well I can get a new bowl for it those aren't very expensive at all and the plastic won't crack and he says yeah that's the idea he got it for me works like a charm still working 20 years later <laughs> what a deal Bonnie helped out with another prank that came up my youngest son Spencer was in high school and he'd had this problem kid all year long. It was a short little kid giving a big tall kid trouble. I said, Spencer, you know the rule here. You're going to pull something on somebody. It's not traceable back to you. He says, what do we do? And I says, well, I'm going over to Goodwill like Mike Bondi says. We went over there and in their bin that was stuff that was going to get thrown in the garbage was the bras and panties, all the ladies' little accoutrements, not to mention all of the makeup and liquid type things that women put on them and in them that Mike had gotten for me at Metro. We loaded up an old used backpack, put that kid's name on it, as well as on the old lady's underwear and stuff, left that out in front of the high school. That got turned into the vice principal's office, and that kid was hauled down to the office to collect his stuff. The more that kid said it wasn't mine, someone did it to me, the more that vice principal believed it was the kid's and he was hiding it. Mike Bondi was glad to hear the story and how it all worked out for everybody. Several other co-workers depended on Mike's humor to make a fun 
shift and to gain some humorous remarks they could use. Among them was Gary, Red, Bruce, Deb, Rory, Kim, Craig, Laura, Dave, and Mark. These guys were Bondi aficionados. If Bondi was going to do something or say something, they were either going to be a part of it or they were going to hear about it and get some enjoyment. Mike made my days at Metro fun. I could always come to him and get a smile. A few times that he's actually came out and worked on the roundups, that was an added bonus. This was something that no one could expect. Mike was the consummate customer's liker. Mike could take care of customers and satisfy their whims. Mike could make anybody at work feel at home, feel glad they were there. For the time I spent with Mike, I'm grateful. Mike's final uh, problem, they were having a little show and tell at the main office downtown, outside on the concrete. It was hot out, everybody was in their Tyvek suits, head to toe. They had all their safety gear on, and they're taking has waste and doing their routine there. But it was in the sun, it was in the heat, and Mike Bondi got heat stroke. I wasn't there to see it, I was told about it later. A little while later, I went into Metro for a little meeting and training session that was being held down at the Metro Paints plant. There was Mike Bondi up in the office. This was where he was staying until his time at work was over. He was not going to be working Metro any longer. He'd been injured. He'd been hurt. This was not a place for him to be outside and doing that sort of thing. But I was able to see him, talk to him, and wish him well. Mike, I wish you were back here with me. Thanks for the time. Thanks for the fun. Thanks for all the people and places you introduced me to. It's been good.